Oh, hi. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Garnside Chats with me. My name is Carrie. Uh, this morning we're back in my garden. Continue our conversation about preparing your garden for the fall and winter because that's kind of what is on my mind right now as a gardener. And I just wanted to share some things that we've been doing in our garden um, and that you can do in yours if you have space still to extend your garden's harvest, you know, from now and into fall and winter and even next spring. So can you see I'm sitting in front of this kind of uh, like raised bed thing um, that we planted kale in last weekend. So you can see we have three rows of kale that's very densely seeded. Uh, I did that for a couple reasons. One, planted it last Saturday, which was a terribly, terribly hot day, which is tough for cool season plants like kale. So we wanted to overseed it just because we didn't know. It was old seed. Uh, with old seed, you always have lower germination rate anyway. Um, and three, we are going to be growing these kale plants for kind of baby greens, you know, greens that are about this big versus like a mature leaf, which can be like this big or bigger. Um, because I'm going to cover this bed with plastic, and we'll talk about that in a second, um, to extend the harvest of this kale into the fall and hopefully winter. Um, so we wanted it really tight anyway because we want, you know, just little tiny baby leaves. So, um, what did we do? So we prepared this, the garden bed like we normally do. Um, you know, I, I dug it up with my potato fork. We added the soil amendments. We have an organic fertilizer that I use. And then I also added feather meal and kelp meal, which is just micronutrients from the kelp meal and predominantly nitrogen from the feather meal. Kale is in the brassica family and brassicas are what we consider heavy feeders. So um, they require lots of nitrogen and nutrition to grow. So I prepared the soil, amended the soil, planted the kale into three rows, as you can see. Um, planted them, you can kind of still tell, planted them in slight trenches so that the water would pool um, and keep the seeds a little more moist. And then after we planted, we covered it with this like trusty window screen, which provides a little bit of shade, which just keeps the young seedlings a little bit cooler. Um, and they were germinating, you know, as of Wednesday, I think. So they've been up for a few days now. Um, so that's how we planted them. Um, we chose a very specific variety of kale. Um, some crops are more um, cold sensitive than others. And then even within that crop, there's varieties that are more cold sensitive than or cold tolerant than other varieties. So this variety is called uh, winter boar kale. It's a pretty tough, honestly, it's a pretty tough kale leaf. You know, it's really for cooking. Um, and it's ruffled and, you know, you've probably seen it. It's a easy to grow kale, but it's not red Russian. Uh, it's not white Russian. It's not dino kale, well, although dino kale can be pretty cold tolerant. Um, anyway, I, we chose this variety because we want it to grow through the winter time. Um, we once we're just going to continue letting it grow, you know, as it is currently, but when it gets really cold, um, probably in November, we'll put some clear five mil plastic over it. Um, and we'll elevate the plastic off of the kind of frame of this raised bed with some PVC hoops. So we'll put some hoops on this bed and then we'll cover it with plastic and that will trap in, uh, like solar radiation and keep the, the garden bed just a little bit warmer to see this kale through the, the winter time. Um, ideally we'd be able to harvest it several times throughout the winter time. This bed is like 12 feet long. So I wanted to plant a whole lot of kale so that we could harvest chunks of it, you know, um, 
throughout the winter and have some of our own produce over the winter time. It really depends on how mild the winter is, how successful this is here in uh, Colombia. So um, I guess, well, you know, it's kind of hit or miss overwintering things and extending your garden harvest into the winter just because you don't know how gray it's going to be and uh, sunlight is really important at this time of year um, or sunlight is really important for this type of gardening because you need to trap that those rays from the sun through the plastic to warm up your little garden bed. Um, so if you want to extend your garden's harvest into the winter time you have to do a couple things. Right now you have to plant immediately because we're really closing in on that window for certain crops. Kale, you still have a couple weeks. We have passed the window for carrots. Carrots are done for, so we'll have two uh, cold frames of kale. Plant now. And then something to cover it with. So a color, it might not let enough sunlight through, but the white ones definitely do. Um, you know, plexiglass, a glass door, a window, something like that. So start looking for those types of things. Um, and if you plant something this weekend, be sure to water it a whole lot because we are supposed to get some rain, but you just never know. And this is, it's been, except for yesterday when we, it rained in some parts of Colombia, um, it has been pretty dry the last couple of weeks and hot garbled and stuff. Okay, we're good. You're back. Oh, I'm back. Um, so yeah, water, water it really well right now, um, just because it's been kind of a dry, hot last few weeks. Um, so that's our, that's our gardening trick for today. Get some packets of greens out, plant them in your garden. You can plant them under, or, you know, um, you can get really like, 